Hi everybody, it's Franny, and today I have a follow-up to the episode I did where I installed a fuel pump in the Volkswagen Beetle. Well, I also installed this regulator, and it went south on me. So I thought it was going to be kind of cool, but I was out driving the car just when I was doing some other work on it, came back, smelled a little gas, and there was gas pouring out of this center hole. Now, several of you in the comments had warned me that this is a piece of junk, and you're absolutely right. It is complete crap. So to replace this, I got a Holly regulator. Now it's a 12-804. And the important thing about this regulator is that it's a one to four PSI. They make a few flavors of it. So make sure you get the right one because we're shooting for about 2.5 to 2.6 PSI, something like that. Something else to note about this is it has two outputs. So the input is in the bottom and then there's an output on each side here. So the idea is that you'd come in from your pump, of course, go out to your carburetor, and then you could use the other side for a gauge if you had a real-time gauge just sitting in the back. Most people aren't gonna do that. So make sure that when you go out and buy connectors for this, because it doesn't come with any, that you also buy a plug as well so that on one of these outputs that you don't need, you can go ahead and plug this thing. Just something to think about. These are 3 8 threads on this thing. So what I got was a set of 3 8 by 3 8 barbs that I can use on this. So it's a 3 8 barb and a 3 8 thread. I got a couple of right angles. I don't know exactly what I'm going to need. But um, the kit does, which is kind of nice, comes with a bracket. So I've got a bracket for this thing. It kind of mounts like, like that. So you got your input here and you can pick either one of these for your output. I'm going to go ahead and install this in the Beetle and see how it turns out. I think it'll be fine. Use this top screw here to adjust it. It got pretty good reviews, so it should be okay. So let me go ahead and install this in the car. I'll test it a bit, and then I will report back. Well, this is my install. So obviously this is the regulator here. This is our line in out of the pump into the back of the bottom of the regulator. And then I did lock off and, and plug this side. On this side, I put my 90 degree on there and that goes out and up all the way up to the carburetor there. Okay, great. I mounted it the same way I did the previous regulator on a screw here, one of the uh, tin screws. And that's pretty much it. It's pretty solid. I mean, it's not going anywhere. It seems very locked down. This is out of the way. And there's the bracket back there as well. It is holding steady, just about a two and a half, maybe 2.6 PSI, which is right where we want it. And so even at speed, it's holding true as well. So that's super awesome. All right, so I have an Allen wrench in here and that's how you adjust this thing. So as you run it up, the pressure will go up a little bit as you turn it in ever so slightly. And then as you roll it down, you can barely see it, but the pressure is rolling down a little bit. Not super duper responsive. So once you have it where you want it, you're gonna lock it with this nut that's here on the end and that's a 16 millimeter but be careful it, it's it's not a very good nut and it's easy to round over the corners on it so let me go ahead and shut off the car now in order to lock this down we're going to hold it with our our allen wrench here all right and then i think it's best to use the open end of the wrench for this and then just lock this guy down. Okay, there we go. Now I did put a little, a little dab of blue Loctite on that nut. I just don't want that thing backing out. It was stupid tight when, when I had to loosen it the first time. So be careful of that. 
So another thing we're really looking for here is that this holds its pressure even with the car off. That means that it's not pushing past the needle and seat in the carburetor. So that's a very cool thing. And it's doing just fine. It's, it's just, it's between two and a half and three PSI. One final test, once we've got this thing set and locked down, let's go ahead and start the car again and just double check our pressure. Our pressure is just shy of three. So at higher speeds, it's uh, right at about two and a half, which is right where we want it. When we shut it off, the pressure seems to go up a little bit. But I think that's good. I'm gonna call that good. Let me go ahead and shut off the car again. I've got everything back together. I wanna to take the car out for a little tootle and we'll double check everything. All my connections are dry, so that's great, but I just wanna go out and give it a little run and get it a little bit warm before I give it back. And remember, of course, whenever you're dealing with gas in the car, you always wanna have your fire extinguisher right there, just in, just in case, the absolute worst. All right, so I hope this was useful. I'm sorry that the other part failed, but this one is, seems to be much better, has much better reviews. So I'll keep you up to date on this one as well. So thank you so much for watching. And until next time, safe travels. Bye.